Today what we're going to do is just a quick instructional video looking at the EFAST or the Extended Focus Assessment in Sonography and Trauma, uh, looking really at some basic surface anatomy and trying to optimise our images as best as possible using surface anatomy and some probe manipulation so that we can acquire optimal images as quick as possible and then obviously look for pathology when it comes to our trauma patients. We're using the Philips Spark today, which is the machine that we use at our hospital here in Toowoomba in Queensland. We're going to go through how to use surface anatomy as well as probe positioning to try and optimise the images as quickly as possible for you guys on the floor so that you get great quality images for interpretation when we're doing the eFast. Obviously, this is going to be following the standard eFast protocol that we go through. And what we're going to do here is we're going to start with right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, go through to the pelvis, capture a sub ziffy view or cardiac window, and then look at the lungs as well. We're not focused on this video in terms of interpretation of the images. It's more about where you want to put your probe to acquire the optimal image so that you can ascertain the images as quickly and rapidly as possible when you're doing it on the floor. So we'll go through the whole process. So to start our exam, we want to hit start end. Uh, we want to register a new patient. For the purpose of today, we're just going to use the UR number as the date. Uh, and then for our protocol here, what we do is we put my initials there so that we know who's done the scan. We need a last name there, which we're going to just use Jerry because we've got our lovely model Jerry here. And if I was proctoring someone, we'd put me as the perform by doctor so that when I'm, when I'm doing these, when I'm reviewing them later on, I know who's performed the scan, but also who's proctored the scan as well. Uh, from here, you just then go to choose our transducer. For the eFast, we want to choose the curvilinear probe. We want the fast presets and then save and exit. And that'll set up a window for us here. Okay, so I've pre-gooped our curvy probe. Always start in your right upper quadrant. So for eFast scanning, it's always worthwhile just doing your surface anatomy first and then seeing what you can see. So what we'll do, because Jerry's a compliant trauma patient, as you know, it's excellent. Get his arm up here out of the road, palpate ziffy sternum, and then all the way across here to mid auxiliary line, probe marker to the patient's head end, pop it down and just see what you can see. So hopefully what you'll be able to see is liver, which is what we can see there. From liver, you want to capture a bit of diaphragm, which is what we've got. And if you just fan the probe back, you should catch some kidney, which we can here. So you can see here, we want to try and get spine as our backstop if you can, which we've got just coming in there. So we can see diaphragm here, spine coming across, a little bit of kidney, which we'll fan through in a minute. But in terms of saving the image, this image here, you can see that, that is, there's no free fluid sitting there. So if we freeze and acquire, that's a pretty good image. Now remembering that eFast is a dynamic scan. So from here, what we'll do is we'll just slide down and we'll, we'll fan all the way through that kidney, making sure we're not missing anything small, okay? And then from this bit here, I'm just going to drop down a rib space and just slide across until we can see the tip of the liver here. So you can see liver tip coming in beautifully there. And then make sure you just fan through that tip of liver so you're not going to miss any small amount of free fluid there. Okay. And that's it. We're good there. So that's, that's our right upper quadrant view. So we'll get Jerry to pop his arm down now. Left upper quadrant, always a bit harder. So again, same landmark. So start with his iffy sternum across, try and go, start with the mid auxiliary line if you can. Pop your probe down, mark a probe to the patient's head end and see what you can see. And hopefully you see a bit of spleen, which we can kind of touch a touch of spleen here. Our patient is never fasted when it comes to ED. So try and, so if you get a view that isn't perfect, just drop a rib space back. So you can see now what we can see. Spleen here, beautiful. Spine at the back and then kidney through here which is nice. And you can see a bit of respiration there. Now, from this view here, so what we do, we can freeze and acquire that, save that there. But again, it's a dynamic scan. So when you're looking at the spleen, always think bleeding, even though it's taught that it's through here, you're going to get bleeding seen above the spleen. The easiest way to try and get there is just go, go counterintuitive, but duck a little bit more towards the patient's bottom end and then tilt up. And then even if you need to get him to take a tiny breath in, there we go, beautiful. So you can get above the spleen there, okay? 
So you can see that there, and then make sure you just fan all the way through that kidney again. All right, so that's good. Next one, going down to the pelvis. So we're going to pelvis, landmarks, so pubic symphysis. It's lower than you think. So we're going down to pubic symphysis. I always start in longitudinal, but it doesn't matter, whichever way you go. And I do do longitudinal and transverse. So what we do, we're gonna tuck the probe in under here. This is actually quite realistic because there's often a pelvic binder on with your marker probe towards the head end of the patient. So we're gonna tuck down, tuck down, tuck down and see, and what you really wanna do, even though it's a bit uncomfortable for Jerry there, what you wanna try and see here is you can see pubic symphysis with some shadow and then bladder here. So we need to reduce our depth. Okay, you can see prostate here. We can probably give ourselves a bit more gain. Prostate. And then seminal vesicles coming off there. Now it's not an amazing view because he doesn't have a full bladder, but that's pretty good. You're gonna be looking for fluid in around the seminal vesicles there. And then from here, just make sure you fan. Oh, we've got to acquire, freeze and acquire. Fan across. See if you can capture the iliacs. So here we go, inguinal ligament there. And then fan across the other way. And again, we're getting a bit of towel artifact. There we go, beautiful inguinal ligament over there as well. And some vessels here. So you've gone all the way through the pelvis. Then we're switching around and we're just gonna do a transverse view. So we know Jerry's blood is fairly empty. So we'll need to press down and look up. And if it's really empty, start by actually visualizing the pubic symphysis here. So you can see pubic symphysis here and then just drop off. And then you'll see a beautiful view of the bladder with the prostate then coming in. And as you come forward a little bit more, you should, we've got a bit of bowel gas there, be able to visualize seminal vesicles, which we've got bowel gas, which we're not gonna be able to overcome, I don't think. But we're looking laterally on each side here for fluid. So again, that's obviously clearly a negative scan. All right, we're gonna come up and we're gonna have a look at subsiffy, try and get a view of the cardiac. I'm just gonna borrow a bit of goop from there. So we've reduced our depth there. We need to just come back out to about 15 centimeters. Always go the wrong way first. That is the rule with depth. Palpate, back to the ziffy sternum. Put your probe down and just drop off until it softens up a little bit. Mark a probe to the patient's right hand side, as always. Tilt the probe up. As soon as you can see a little cardiac movement, which we can see there, if your patient's able to, you're gonna to take a deep breath in and you'll find the cardiac views drop in beautifully. I'm gonna acquire that image for either way. So rather than sort of pushing and trying to increase your depth here, use your patient's ability to take a breath. Obviously that's not always the case in trauma, but for an awake patient, you get a much cleaner view because you're using a lot more of the liver if they breathe into it, okay? The other little thing, if you're getting a lot of bowel gas here, just slide across a touch counterintuitive across to the patient's right into the liver, tilt away from the stomach and then breath in. And what you'll find, even though you get a slightly shortened view, you still are able to get a view even if you've got a lot of bowel gas involved. So that's sliding across, tilting away and then looking in and up to the pericardium. Okay, two more, which is your lungs. So reduce your depth down once you get used to this, you tend not to actually do it. Bit more goop. This is the E or extended component. So your landmarks, clavicle, midclavicular line. So again, probe marker to the patient's head end. Pop it down. And then again, see what you can see. What we find usually is even though it's nice to get the clavicle in there, you get a better view and you're still very superior and very high up in the chest with the sort of third and fourth rib space. What you're trying to do here, you wanna see rib and rib with beautiful plural line in between, and you want that line to be bright as possible. So usually that involves just a slight tilt towards the mediastinum to get that brighter. So you can see on here, Jerry's got this beautiful marching ant sign right at the top there as it slides across, you've got nice lung sliding. For documentation, pop your M mode on, Hit M mode twice there. And then this is your, your sandy beaches sign. Where you can see intercostal muscles here, pleura there. And because the pleura is sliding, you get this 
sort of scattered grey haziness down here, which is your, your crashing waves and your sandy beach below it. So we freeze, acquire that. What we're going to do, we'll just go to the other side now and have a quick look. You can keep it on M mode if you like. Again, optimise your image. So you want those rib, rib, pleura. And you can see again, beautiful sandy beaches, negative for uh, pneumothorax. If we get Jerry just to take a de deep breath in and hold it for us. See how long he can hold his breath for. Beautiful. So breathe away normally. So even though you can still see some movement here in Jerry because he's a young fellow, but you could potentially think that this is going to be a pneumothorax because there's less movement there. It's quite common to have this sometimes if you've got a right main bronchus intubation. But you can see, still see here, there's regular cardiac movement going on here, which means there isn't a pneumothorax there. So that's one way of telling if it's a right main bronchus intubation, even though there is no lung sliding, there's still cardiac movement, which you won't get if there is a pneumothorax. As you can see, so uh, with the EFAST, it's, it's quite quick and it should be quick. And I guess the one thing to think about it in terms of trauma and trauma management is you are part of the team and you do not want to get involved in, in the road, in the team dynamics of that. So if you can get in and out and make that quick and as less invasive as possible, it makes the whole team process really slick for that. So what I'd recommend for that is actually practicing on your trauma patients that are not critically unwell so that when you've got the critically unwell patient, you can zip around and do your, do your windows as quickly as possible acquire the images and if you need to go back and have a look at them afterwards to see whether or not you've actually got a positive or a negative scan particularly when you're doing those dynamic images if you want to save a little loop there if you're not 100 percent sure rather than trying to optimize your image and taking forever to do that in terms of slowing down the process and the, the process of the trauma patient getting to where they need to be so that concludes our video tutorial for eFast i hope it was helpful for everyone Thanks for watching and happy scanning.